this time, unlike during my previous 14 times of speaking at this conference, um, my session is going to be only about 18 minutes long speaking time. Yet I have about 49 slides, so it's going to be very, very dynamic. And um, before, well, before we get into it, let me do something. Let me introduce myself. My name is Gino Prusakov. Some of you may know me, others may not. I do numerous things. I write books um, and I blog. And one of the books that I've written, which is called Affiliate Program Management in Hour a Day, I'll be giving away three copies of it to the three people that ask good questions right after this presentation. So think of good questions, stick around obviously, um, ask the good questions, and I'll autograph the book for you and I'll uh, hand it to you. Now I also uh, run a company called AM Navigator. We are an affiliate program management slash consulting slash uh, education company. We do everything related, hey Brad, uh, everything related to affiliate program management. And so if you need an affiliate program audit, everyone in this room, I will give you a free affiliate program audit. Just shoot me an email right there in the footer if you can see gino at amnavigator.com. Claim your audit, I'll audit your affiliate program, whether yours or your clients, free of charge. I also run a conference called Affiliate Management Days, which is the only conference dedicated specifically to affiliate program management and leveraging affiliates um, to build your brand, to uh, drive incremental sales and leads. Now, I'm also very active on Twitter. That's why you have my Twitter handle right there, eprusakov. And in fact, speaking of Twitter, let me go and tweet something real quick. Okay, done. And those of you that are thinking, how outrageous is this? He has 18 minutes and he's tweeting from stage. Go to this Twitter account, twitter.com slash eprusakov. If you're connected or if you're not just Connect through your Wi-Fi, uh, ASW16 Wi-Fi is the Wi-Fi password. Right there, you'll see a post by me that says affiliate activation, 20 ways to get them cranking full deck and a link so that you don't have to take notes. Just follow along. This is going to be very dynamic, very quick uh, because there is quite a bit that we want to cover because this is actually the most common problem that we see in programs nowadays, in affiliate programs nowadays. Only about one out of eight is doing something. The rest are being bored, as you all know from uh, the recent movie. Well, jokes aside, about 10% of your affiliates are currently active, and about 90 of them are not sending you conversions or maybe not even traffic. I used to ask people to raise their hands telling me how many of uh, their affiliates are active or stagnant. I have only 18 minutes for this one, so I'll save you um, uh, the raising of hands. Now, 10% active, about 90 stagnant, paradoxical, to me at least. You didn't make them join your affiliate program. There's no way for you to make an independent marketer apply into your affiliate program, right? So they've applied into your program, they got approved, they are not doing anything, or hardly anything. Now there's an additional challenge that I want you to keep in mind at all times. And the additional challenge is that in this context, you're now marketing to marketers. They are the ones that are to market your product, yet now you are in the business of marketing to them to market your product. So that's the additional challenge that also, um, um, while, it, while the 90% is the low hanging fruit, this is where the opportunity is. But the, this is what you got to do, cut the fluff. Be concrete and very specific with them. Don't give them the best affiliate program in the world, uh, uh, best converting uh, offers type of lingo. It is not something that they want to hear at this phase, that they've joined your affiliate program and they need to be activated. So ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the grits. I did get some education in North Carolina, but this is not connected, trust me. This stands for four great resources that you want them to be educated with, incentives that you want to motivate them by, tools to equip them, and support. If you open the Feedfront magazine, which is in every bag that um, was, um, every goodie bag that you received um, when picking up your badge, you will find my article, which introduces the, uh, the approach. Now, uh, if you also go to my Twitter account, you will also see an infographic linked from it, which 
sort of introduces it as well. Today I'm going to dive a little deeper and look at practical examples of ways to activate affiliates within every one of this. So we'll start with resources. Now when it comes to resources, the most commonly ignored one is the approval email. So affiliates very frequently apply into hundreds of affiliate programs at once. Consequently, they receive hundreds of approval emails. Some of them are being templates and are, are not of substance really. So what you want to do, you want to stand out of this crowd by reminding them of your program details, by including reasons to activate, presenting them with pre-coded links, which they could just grab and paste right into their affiliate sites, by calling to action and by providing your detailed contact information. It's very important. We very frequently just overlook this opportunity to activate them right upon approving, being approved into our affiliate program. And the key objective here, I hate pictures of bags of money, don't you? But I had to use something here. Key objective, excite them to take action. Number two is textual content. Now, static textual content. So look at what Sigma, affiliate, uh, Sigma Affiliates does or Sigma Beauty Affiliate Program, which has a separate website just for uh, affiliates. Under basics, they have what is affiliate marketing, navigating your account, payment info, um, affiliate customer support, FAQ disclosure, and so on. And if you look to the um, uh, right, the third tab from the right says strategies. So they will actually give affiliates, new affiliates, in prospective affiliate strategies on how to uh, monetize their websites, their email lists. Depending on the channel that the affiliate uses, they will give you the strategy. So the static textual content, well optimized to rank high in search engines, may come in form of program support website, FAQ section, tips and ideas, that strategies tab, and educational material that they may find useful. You will see many affiliate networks are actually doing the same now. Now, here's how eBags does it. This is an FAQ section from which you can learn. Again, the whole slide deck, for those of you coming in a little late, is available on SlideShare under the Affiliate Summit account um, there on slideshare.com. Thirdly, dynamic textual content, which is the content that you'll be updating on an ongoing basis. Your blog, a Facebook page or group that I encourage you to start for your affiliates, a LinkedIn group, which you can also support, or Twitter updates. Living Social has a very active Twitter account from which you can learn. In fact, if you go to my Twitter um, account, you will see under lists and go to affiliate programs, you will see a bunch of others that are supporting their affiliate programs through um, uh, Twitter streams and Twitter updates. And here's one from Ticket Network, um, constantly updating your affiliates uh, on the most current um, offers that you want them to promote. Now, these are just specific to affiliate programs. This is not the master account for uh, Living Social or Ticket Network. Fourthly, dynamic content is a great, great tool. And here's, uh, I'm sorry, visual content is a great tool. And here's why. Because our brain is 90% visual. The information that it processes is visual. and you will forget about 90% of what you hear from me right now. That's why there's that slide deck in there. That's why there are all these examples in this presentation. You also forget about 80% of what you read. And that's because our brain is wired in such a way that we process visual information about 60,000 times faster than text. 60,000 times faster than text. Moo.com offers user guides to affiliates even before they join the affiliate program. And then once they join, there is another, there's one before joining called CJ or Commission Junction Sign Up. And then there's another one linking to Moo. And same for Affiliate Window, the other affiliate network on which they are also present. How to sign up with us and how to link to us. So that's sort of like the pre-recruitment or the recruitment phase and then the activation phase, which we're discussing right now. Fanatics.com is doing a phenomenal job through their affiliate program support website. And they also have, they say we're big believers in tools and in teaching affiliates how to use those tools. That's why they have share sale basic training tutorials. They are on share sale affiliate network. You, you can see only <clears throat> the top of the screenshot from that um, page, but they have a, a whole array of videos from which affiliates can learn. 
On we move to incentives. And we will just keep on counting. Uh, so we stopped at number four. Activation incentives. This is something that can be, well, obviously we're talking activation, right? So there, incentives exist in two types always. Activation and performance incentives. One at a time. Activation incentives is something like this. When someone on share sale applies for, your, for access to your affiliate data feed, what do most affiliate program managers do? They tick that FTP access box, then click the update FTP status, uh, FTP status, uh, access status button, and the affiliate is approved to access the merchant's product feed. What we do at AM Navigator, we see that contact hyperlink. We click it to open it in a new window, and after updating the FTP access status, approving the affiliate to access the FTP, we say congratulations. We, we personalize, this is, this is a generic um, text, which is actually pretty close to the truth of what we are sending out. We say congratulations, you've been approved for the FTP access. Now, here's what we want you to do. If you generate so many sales, or $799 in sales by February 28th, I will deposit a $50 cash bonus on top of your commissions into your affiliate account. So that provides them, that tells them not only that they've been approved into, um, uh, to access the FTP, um, but also that there's an additional incentive for them to activate. Now then there are performance incentives, and the classic example there is Amazon's sliding commission scale. They pay affiliates based on how many items referred to them by the affiliate were shipped in a given month. One to six, 4% commission. 7 to 30, 50% commission bump to 6%. Furthermore, when an affiliate logs into their affiliate account, they see this. So um, in this particular month, I referred one sale or one item was shipped. I'm marketing my own books, which are being sold on Amazon. And then they're also telling me, hey, increase your referral rate to 6% by referring six more items. Now, Contests is another very, very effective way to activate affiliates. Here's an example from Bid Defender. Now, you can uh, get a closer view of it if you go to SlideShare and pull up the presentation there. Um, essentially, what here Bid Defender was saying every affiliate that's aboard our affiliate program in the UK or in the US qualifies for this contest. Just improve, just become the most improved affiliate as compared to the three months average uh, prior to the date that we started this contest, and we will pay you $1,000. And then further down there it says, if this were not enough, the first 10 affiliates who get in contact with me via email uh, upon sending the newsletter will get a free one uh, year license to uh, use our antivirus. On we move to tools. Remember grits, great resources, incentives, tools. So as far as tools are concerned, there's an array. And, and, and what I'm saying here is not limited to what I'm showing here. Anything can be fit into this paradigm. So say a blogger plugin. So many affiliates are being, um, running their affiliate websites on WordPress. Um, the vast majority of blogs are actually run on WordPress. So here's what Walmart did. They created a plugin, which is called Walmart Affiliate uh, Link. Um, which uh, is created specifically for affiliates, and whenever a blog post contains text that matches a set pattern, it gets converted into a paid walmart.com link. Now, they run their affiliate program on Linkshare, which is now known as Rakuten Affiliate Network, yet they've created this separate plugin, which I encourage you to do as well, um, for affiliates. Another thing is widgets. Here's what Crazy for Bargains does on Share Sale Affiliate Network. It's a widget, a sidebar widget, which uh, then doesn't occupy three times as much space, but you can see, first tab, Scooby Slip, Sleepwear, Scooby for Boys is the second tab, Scooby for Girls is the, the third one. I didn't want to give you examples of how Amazon does it because they have a, a, a much more complex system, but here's how you can do it within Share Sale if you're on Share Sale Affiliate Network, for example. Then comes content about product. No one knows your product better than you do. Here's what one unhappy affiliate posted on Facebook about a month ago. I sometimes get requests from affiliate managers on what will help affiliates market the product 
I always ask for content. I rarely get a response. And the content will help them create blog posts, articles, reviews, how-to guides, social media content, <coughs> and so on. Do warn them of the duplicate, potential duplicate content issues so that they uh, don't merely copy it and paste it. Then come the lists of best sellers. Again, you know better than do they do what sells best and what is more popular on your website. Beat hotel rooms or books. Do provide them with lists of best sellers through your newsletters. Then come keywords. Rank Central says it's very important to focus your SEO around specific keywords and furthermore uh, paid search and they give very specific PPC keywords for very specific products that they sell. Three products, three generic keywords which you can or affiliates can expand into long tail and benefit from that. So that's, that's all equipping, that's, that's all invaluable tools. Equip also your developers via API access. API access to what? To your product feed. You can do it through any major affiliate network or any serious affiliate marketing platform. Amazon does it, so does Walmart. Then come mobile oriented tools. So long we've been talking about this year or that year being the year of mobile, it's already here. Mobile is already here and 7.1 billion people connect to the internet via mobile. Here's the data, here's the stat that is most staggering here. Look to the far right, 58% of those are using the old button feature phones. Now, do you have banners for those? Do you have creatives for feature phones? I doubt it. I don't even know if you have creatives. Many of my clients don't have creatives for smartphones. Here are the sizes that we should offer affiliates. Now, if you're as sophisticated as Amazon, you could also offer API access for mobile app and game developers. And then finally, support the ASPART and the GRITS uh, mnemonic. Being reachable is extremely important. Look at what Apple iTunes does. You can see that affiliate help desk under support. Um, you click it, a window opens up, iTunes affiliate support, your email address, name, and then you pick from drop down menu the issue. The drop down menu here covers the, the, the main text field. Type in your main text, you can attach attachments and then submit it. They are very good at supporting their affiliate program. So be reachable. Also segment affiliates. Good friend of mine, Caroline Kmat, once wrote, as a retailer, you're currently segmenting your customers, most likely, because different types of customers require different levels of service. So do different types of affiliates require different resources. You can segment them by type, by performance, by niches, by terms and payouts. Every major affiliate network allows you to do that. Here's share sale, um, and you can see group affiliates, CJ, manage affiliates by group, web gains, any major affiliate network and even smaller affiliate networks, as in this example, uh, in the US do allow you to do that. Seventeenthly, motivate by examples of what other affiliates are doing, but pull the sensitive information. Never share any specific affiliate's information with another affiliate. They will, the, the former will not appreciate it. Here's how one of our <clears throat> clients does it. Here's how well some of our current affiliates are doing. SEM affiliate earns $2,800 uh, a day in one day commission sometimes. Email affiliate, 1,500 days and blogging and their ZPC or average affiliate earnings per click or per 100 clicks in this particular example. So do motivate through examples. Always remove sensitive info. URLs, names, specific content, God forbid you start sharing one affiliate success in very concrete terms with other affiliates. That would just not be right. Eighteenthly, tailored suggestions. This affiliate, I really don't know if they looked like this or not, but if you go to my blog to, the, to where I introduced the approach, it's one of the uh, 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 latest blog posts, he posted a lengthy comment under that uh, GRITS approach, and he, I didn't ask him for this, but it was invaluable, and I'm highlighting the, the part that I especially like. They said over the next week, after being approved into the affiliate program, the company that was managing the program sent a few suggestions to get the most out of the program via email. What a contrast to about 70% of the other companies that have affiliate programs. 
So look at their website and see how they could promote you and tell them um, some of those tips. They will be highly appreciated and will help facilitate activation. Surveys. Survey your affiliates. Ask them how you could uh, make your affiliate program better. For one of our clients, Office Designs, we ran this survey. We asked them, how, do you think, uh, how easy do you think it is on a 1 to 10 scale to promote our products? And what is your perspective on working with our affiliate program? And what could we uh, improve? And if we were to improve that one thing that you've mentioned, what would be the next most important thing that we could improve? You will be surprised how much valuable data a $10 Starbucks card can buy you. Number 20, follow up. And here's why, because upon initial email outreach, you will probably get, well, maximum 4% response. But it is through follow-ups that you can reach up to 12% more. Follow up a week from the original email, then one more week down the road, two to three months, half a year, and maybe a year down the road if you haven't heard from them. Who knows, maybe they were on a year-long vacation. Uh, this does work, but it is work. Um, so be personal, be relevant, entice, call to action, rinse and repeat, follow up. To recap, you want to activate affiliates with this GRITS approach. Resources such as approval email, uh, static and dynamic content, visual content, uh, incentives, performance, and uh, activation incentives, contests as well, tools such as blogger plugins, widgets, content about products, lists of bestsellers, keywords, product API access, and mobile-oriented tools, and support them by being reachable, by segmenting, by motivating through examples, by tailoring your suggestions to their very uh, method of promotion or website, surveying them, and following up. In conclusion, did you know that there is only one fish in the world that cannot swim backwards? It's a shark. Swims sideways, up and down, but never backwards. So be a shark in your affiliate program, aggressive in a good way, determined and focused, and I'm sure this will be contagious and helpful to you in activating your affiliates. I'm done, open for questions. I have three books. I think we have time, about seven minutes. Yes, sir. So the question was, can I address the question of, of uh, running an affiliate program on multiple affiliate networks? Um, there is an article, if you go and Google affiliate program multiplicity, um, that I wrote about four years ago that dives into some of that. Long story short, you got to really manage it uh, to ensure that one bad apple doesn't spoil the whole bunch on both networks, because likely it will be the last click that will win in your case. And um, there may be benefits, yes. Uh, probably not more than two networks. I, I haven't seen it because there's so much overlap between some of the larger ones. But yeah, uh, that would be a good place to start. Affiliate program multiplicity article in Revenue Performance Magazine. OK. First book gone. Two more left. Yes, ladies. So the question is about providing content to affiliates, and when you uh, provide content to uh, an affiliate, yet as an OPM, you have a client that requires approval of that content. How do you handle which part? How do you facilitate, I guess, the manner that's actually going to make it relevant and current? So who puts together the content? The client or yeah. yourself? Well, that's, you've answered your own question. I think that's the, really, there's no other way to, to do it. I've had clients which, you know, would have several layers, publicly traded companies, you know, have legal departments of their own, so <clears throat> every word would matter. The other question is how would you police, uh, 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 sort of like, sort of offspringing of that, how would you police that they are actually compliant with whatever your client is requiring? There are tools, there is a, uh, 
an affiliate summit presentation of about two years ago that, that I did here, I think, in Vegas about the affiliate toolbox. If you just go to SlideShare and Google, oh, Google, isn't it funny how we are using the term for search um, interchangeably? So just search uh, affiliate manager toolbox, and there are tools for that. But yeah, if your client requires approval of the content before you distribute it to affiliates, then that's, that's what you've got to do, run it by them. Um, you had a question too. So if it's a new affiliate, um, new to the affiliate space, how many affiliate networks should, should they join in the first year or um, at the outset? So uh, I guess the answer would, would be based on where you find matches. Um, say we did an analysis of 550 uh, top affiliate programs on six um, affiliate networks in the US, and it, it, it struck me that uh, 88.7, I believe, percent fall into just 20 niches. The top, top ones being, that occupy about 44 percent, being fashion, um, then uh, uh, sports and outdoors, and then health and wellness. Now, if none of those, uh, none of the, if none of the programs that match what you are doing, the content that you are creating, or whatever other mes methods that you're employing, um, if if they are, if they don't have affiliate programs on the networks that you're looking at, then you, you look for other networks. But it's it's sort of like there's no answer. That's what I'm trying to say. Look at, at what uh, what programs are on the various affiliate networks and judge by what fits what you are looking for. I am a strong believer that, that one can become a super affiliate pretty much in any niche provided they do provide quality content to the end user or value added service. There was a question back there. Yes, ma'am. Um, as a one person affiliate manager and only so many hours in a day, is there in-house based? In-house based? You yes. okay. So if you are an in-house based affiliate manager, you have only so many hours, um, work hours uh, or hours to devote to the program, what's the number one priority that you should focus on? The answer was in, in the presentation that I did at Affiliate Summit East uh, of the last year on affiliate recruitment because it, it really is um, affiliate recruitment um, and then sort of intertwined very much with activation. Um, so I would say that, and I, I always tell prospective clients that in our company, when we assign an account manager to work on their program on an outsourced basis, we demand that they spend um, about 80% of their time on recruiting affiliates, finding new affiliates to join the program, and then activating them, because that's your most important, two most important tasks. Then come uh, compliance policing, which can be streamlined through tools and communication, which is not as frequent as uh, the, 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 the first two, and program optimization, which I, there's actually a breakdown on, if you go to YouTube and find affiliate and, and look for affiliate program, resp affiliate manager responsibilities, I recorded a video on this, giving you the breakdown of how much time to spend on each. Do we have any more questions? We have one minute and 30 seconds. Yes, ma'am. I'd love to speak with you after this, not to di not to uh, disclose any um, information in public and in front of uh, the camera. But the question was essentially: if an affiliate is not providing me with <clears throat> data on where exactly they are uh, acquiring traffic from, how could I be constructively successfully supporting uh, their efforts? I Sounds like a worrisome situation to me on, on certain levels. When there's lack of transparency, there's, there may be things to worry about. I don't want to ask you which affiliate platform or network that is. I would love to dive into it with you and see 
if I can give you more concrete advice than the generic one that I'm saying now that there may be things to worry about, uh, which I'm sure you yourself already know. But uh, yeah, let, let's talk after this. And we are done. I think, yeah, it says time right there on the back wall. And uh, I'm finished. If anyone has questions, I'm, I'll stick around. The three books go to the gentleman in the front, to the lady uh, in the blue blouse, and to the affiliate who's new to the industry.